Hi everyone, it's Saturday, March 21st, and I'm sure if you're like me, you're still wrestling with the announcement that Governor Pritzker made yesterday about the necessity and the need for all of our safety to stay at home. I know it's going to be difficult. I, I'm not sure how I'm going to manage. I'm not sure where I'm going to find the patience to be able to put up being uh, in such a closed uh, environment with my family all for the next two, three, four weeks. I'm not even sure how long this is going to last. And I'm sure you have lots of questions just like I do. This Throughout this past week, every day we've been having a, a time together, a devotion, where we've been looking at the nation of Israel and how they adjusted from being in slavery to being the people of God and all the turmoil and the difficulty that happened. We've discovered that an important part of that transition to this new way of living for them was to remember God's faithfulness, to remember all the incredible things that God had done, and to remember all that God promised about how God would be with them and what God would do in the future. Those promises were the foundation of their, their relationship with God. It's important for us to do that because remembering those things changes our perspective. It helps to put a, a guard against the fear, and it reminds us it's okay to trust in God. There's one more thing I think that's crucial that Moses said to the people as they were making this transition, uh, a rule of life that he left for them. In fact, he said, this rule is so important. I want you to be, be one of the first things you teach your kids. He said to always remember, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Basically, love God with everything you got, every part of your being, and don't hold back. That phrase, that verse from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, has become a, a pivotal part uh, of the faith of the nation of Israel and the faith of anyone uh, who confesses to believe and to follow after Jesus. Loving God is an important part uh, of how we practically move forward in times like this. What we do is we make this the focal point of our life, is figuring out how we love God. Jesus would later add to this, not just loving God, but also loving your neighbor and loving yourself. In fact, when Jesus gathered his disciples together for the night before he was betrayed, when he knew their lives would be turned upside down, he said, this is how you're going to survive the storm. Love one another. Now, if you hang out around me and you hang around at church, you've heard me say this over and over and over again. But when we are in times of trouble, when there's turmoil, when the storms are raging, when the chaos is unmanageable, how do we practically move forward? How do we live? Well, we take a deep breath and we start choosing to love one another. Love God to love ourselves. It doesn't mean that we feel like it or uh, we've got the warm, fuzzy feelings or people deserve it, but we make choices. We say, yeah, there's chaos around me. Yes, there's a storm. Yes, my life has been turned upside down. This is how I'm going to respond to those things. I'm going to make a choice to choose to spread God's love, to love God with all I've got, to love other people with everything I have, to love myself as God loves me. Choosing to focus our life on learning and figuring out and developing that kind of love is so important. Author Gary Chapman wrote a book called The Five Love Languages. Um, and there's an illustration in these books. And I share this at every wedding I ever do, every couple that comes to me for counseling, every couple that wants to get married and they, we do premarital, premarital counseling, I always share this story. Uh, and, and it comes from The Five Love Languages. And author Gary Chapman tells us we all have a love tank. Uh, it's inside of us. God created us with this love tank. And the problem is, is that many of us go around with our love tanks running dry. Uh, we have, they're not been filled up. We cut ourselves off and we demand that other people love us all the time. But because our love tanks are dry, it's very difficult. And he challenges us and says, instead of taking love and always being concerned about having your love tank filled, how about you focus on filling everybody else's love tank whom is close to you. Everybody who you live with, all your neighbors, those people are who you're in contact with on a daily basis, uh, as limited as that might be to, on these days, focus on filling up their love tanks. When everybody in your circle does this, what happens? Everybody's tank gets filled. It might seem counterintuitive. We might just want to be loved. But the secret is, is as much as we want to be loved, to be loved, we must first be willing to love. And to learn to love others, we have to learn to allow God to love us. When we focus and make this the central part of our life, okay, 
For example, today's the day I'm going to love my wife with everything I've got. Today's the day I'm going to love my kids. Of course, I'm going to fail. I'm not going to be able to do that wholly. I'm not perfect. I'm going to become impatient and upset at times. But if I always recenter myself, if I take time each day to recenter my day, refocus and say, the purpose of this day is to love God with everything I've got and to love the people around me with everything I have and to love myself as God loves me. If I take the moment each day to refocus myself, recenter, and say, this is the purpose of this day, well, all of a sudden, the world is a lot more manageable, the storms aren't so big, and the fear isn't quite so scary. Tomorrow, it's Sunday morning, and we're going to be doing worship. Uh, because of the stay-at-home order, uh, I want to remind everyone, uh, you can't come to the building tomorrow to do worship. You need to stay at home. But you can worship with us tomorrow. We're going to have one worship service. It's at 9 a.m. We're going to broadcast it live via our Facebook page, uh, live simulcast. Uh, you can join us live and worship with us live. But you can also watch it. Uh, um, the record, recording of that service will be posted uh, on YouTube. And we are going to send out an email with a link. So if you're having trouble figuring out how you tune in live, uh, the basic way is you go to our Facebook page and you just click on the live simulcast and you'll be able to watch us live. But otherwise, we'll send out shortly afterwards an email to everybody who is on our email list and they'll have a link in it and you just click on that link and you'll be able to watch the service and worship with us. I know it's an adjustment, uh, but it's something that we have to do in these extraordinary times. Next week, uh, each day I'll be posting another devotion that helps us connect with God uh, and with each other. And I'll be focusing on how God uh, helps to, to clean up and to cleanse and to heal the messes that we make in our own relationships, especially with those whom we are closest to and those who we live with. In the meantime, take care of yourself. Look in on those who are vulnerable. Uh, have patience uh, with one another and make loving God, yourself, and others with all you got, the focal point of your day. Amen.